Mr. Dave Kerpen. Dave is a New York Times bestselling author, serial entrepreneur, and global keynote speaker. But I still believe this introduction does not do justice to everything that he's doing. So Dave, would you like to tell us more about all the amazing things that you're doing? Sure, thanks for having me. Um, well, the most amazing thing that I'm doing is uh, raising three children with my uh, amazing wife. And so we have a three-year-old who's homesick today, which oh is gosh, uh, I'm so sorry. why I'm home with him, and uh, a 16-year-old and an 11-year-old. That's definitely my most important work. And like you said, I've also written a bunch of books and built a couple of companies. And um, I enjoy speaking around the world whenever, whenever possible. That's amazing. So, you know, um, I've been wondering ever since I read your first book, like Kibu Social Media, why orange and why not any other color? Sure. Well, the story with orange, uh, it is the most positive persuasive color. Okay. Um, but the first story about orange is when our original color for our company, Likeable, uh, our original logo was a blue thumb and it looked a little bit too much like the uh, Facebook uh, blue thumb. Our lawyer said we shouldn't, uh, you know, we shouldn't keep it. So we, we, our designers gave us some different options and um, they gave us an orange thumb and I fell in love with it. It was love at first sight. And so um, we adopted the orange thumb and then um, the orange kind of spread to other areas, as you can see. Um, and then most, most notably, I guess, my shoe collection. It's up to 58 pairs of orange shoes. And um, I wrote in The Art of People, my last book, about how uh, when you have a personal style like that you are become known for, it can actually make, um, make a difference in getting people's attention in a positive way. And I did read that, and I also saw some of your interviews. And I have been wondering since then, um, it, as a man, you know, as a male, it might be easy to carry uh, an accessory which defines your branding. But being a woman, how can I incorporate that into my style? You know, I'm going to actually say that I think it's easier for a woman than a man because a man doesn't have as many accessories typically. So I, I've had, I had one woman that I worked with who ended up putting a flower in her hair, a different, a different color flower in her hair always. I had somebody else who wore pearls, pearls every day and not just a pearl necklace, but a, 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 a pearl um, bracelet, you know, and a pearl ring and, and all kinds of interesting accents there. You can wear a certain color bag handbag every day or a certain color scarf um so to me there's lots of different ways to add that particular accent to your style and your dress and it's definitely just as easy if not easier actually for a woman because like i said society has certain expectations i probably couldn't wear a flower in my hair for instance or a pearl necklace every day but i can yeah uh, but i but i have the shoe thing and i guess men can also do obviously ties or pocket squares or other items that are uh that, that that help them stand out right i was just talking with my husband about it last night and he said knowingly or unknowingly the black fila t-shirts have become his identity i mean he's he works in a corporate company and um, uh, he just is comfortable wearing it and now it has become a brand for him so uh, that's very interesting you know and um so you know, you accepted my friend request and then I asked you for an interview and you accepted my interview. And um, even though you had no idea about who this lady was and I was just reaching out to you and I don't have a big platform or anything. And thank you so much for accepting it. So you always talk about being likable, you know, and you're not even just talking the talk, but you're walking the walk. So how do you stay so grounded and so humble even after achieving so much? Well, I mean, I think you're very kind. I think that, you know, of course, I don't, I mean, I don't think anyone really thinks they've achieved that much. Um, for, for me, for instance, I really, you know, I have so much more I want to do and so much more I want to impact in terms of my community and the world. So I really feel like I'm just beginning. But um, with respect to the issue of, I guess, likability, I just think that the world is a smaller place than ever before, and it's a more connected place than ever before. And 
um, when you're likable, that, that makes a difference in the long run. And when you're not likable, that makes a difference in the long run. So, you know, there's some people that I've interacted with in my career that I will never again interact with and help. And, you know, because, because of the attitude that they had and, and the lack of kindness that they had. And so from my perspective, when we put kindness uh, into the world, um, it is uh, helpful for us in two ways. First, like I said, it's a small world and you never know when people will end up interacting with you again and, um, and being able to help you. And second, and more important, kindness actually feels better, right? So there's an argument to be made that kindness and likability is selfish because when I'm kind to people, when I do an act of kindness, when I am grateful, it makes me feel better. It puts me in a better mood. And so um, that helps me become a better leader and a better husband and a better father and a better human being. And that's why I, I, I always say that kindness and gratitude are these amazing gifts that, you know, I, I wish everyone could feel the sense of um, urgency and excitement around kindness and gratitude that I that I try to practice every day. That's truly amazing. But does it ever get overwhelming? I mean, you know, uh, because we are, I mean, as a business owner, and especially as a women business owner, I get a lot of requests on different kind of platforms, social media. So I would want to, you know, really be kind to everyone and respond to everyone, but sometimes it's not possible and it becomes overwhelming. So how do I find that balance and figure out whom to respond to and not respond to? Yeah, I think that's a fair question. And I, even though I, I core, uh, one of my core values is responsiveness and I try to be as responsive as possible, I'll be the first to admit that I do not respond to everybody. Um, my, my personal rule is, you know, if somebody sends me what's really obviously spam that they're sending everyone, then I don't feel any sense of obligation to respond to that. And so th those are the ones that go unresponded to. But if somebody outreaches, um, like you did, you know, I, I do try to respond. Um, one, one tool that I have is I have office hours every Thursday from three to 5 PM. So many, many people that reach out to me sort of unsolicited and just want to meet with me or whatever, I give them a time slot there. And I, I have an easy website that I set up that I give out in my books and then anywhere that, that I talk. So, you know, people can go to scheduledave.com, even your, your viewers and your readers can go to scheduledave.com and meet with me on a Thursday afternoon. And that way it frees up the rest of my week to do the things that are more important. That's amazing. Um, That's such a golden nugget essentially so 3 to 5 p.m is it central time eastern time and i and i call it office hours so basically th that that's time that i'm focused on meeting with anyone that wants to meet with me for any reason and you know i do get a lot of sales people trying to sell me stuff it doesn't usually work that well yes. um i i also have been men mentoring and coaching some younger people and some of them have co come back once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven times over the last few years. And it's been amazing to be able to help them and be a part of their lives um, from time to time, just during my office hours. Always, always so giving. That's truly wonderful. So uh, you also recently launched this day called the Likeable Media Day. Uh, be Likeable Day. And so how did you come up with this concept and how did you get all these people involved to be a part of this movement? Yeah, so I wish I could say I came up with it, but I didn't. Like, like uh, I remember when um, early on, uh, when it was pitched to me, I was like, I love this so much. The only thing I don't love is that I, I didn't come up with the idea, so I'm a little jealous. But it was uh, two of my, my team members at Likeable, Michelle and Teresa, really just terrific, uh, young, smart women. And they, um, they came up with the idea around my, my the the book launch of my third, the third edition of likable social media. So, you know, counting, I've done four books and, you know, a second edition and a third edition to my first book. And so counting that, it's like, I've done a lot of book launches and I wanted for this book launch to not do the traditional thing, not have a, just a regular old book launch party and try to promote my book and, you know, whatever. I've sort of been there and done that. So I figured this could be much, much more meaningful. And would we sell a few books along the way? I'm sure we would but I wasn't focused on that. And so when, when this idea was presented to me of doing Be Likeable Day, I thought it was just an amazing idea. I, I jumped right on it and 
I'm really, really proud of the work that we did. You know, we did it February 26th. Yes. We reached 77 million people across the world in 25 countries. Um, we were trending on Twitter. And it was just really asking people to commit to one act of kindness on social media. And I think it really, really resonated with people because social media has gotten to be, and the internet has gotten to be, a very negative place for a lot of people. And so just, just the idea of making it a little bit more positive and on one day, it really resonated with people. So, so much so that we are definitely going to do it again next year and hopefully a lot bigger. It definitely resonated with people and it was all over my social media. And um, I love the video, like, okay, you know, uh, social media has become so negative and depressing, but let's make it likable and more positive, which was really, it hit the, it hit the heart. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. So, you know, um, you have written New York Times bestsellers. I help people uh, write and publish their books and launch them on um, Amazon. And uh, all authors obviously dream of getting on that New York Times bestselling list. So, you know, real quick, how is the process? How difficult or easy it is? And has life changed after that? And we do people, you know, view at you differently? Yeah, great questions. Um, so the, the, the first thing, the most important thing, because first, first of all, I love authors and I love helping authors. So actually, I, on my um, office hours, I, I talk to a lot of authors too. Um, the biggest thing, the, the biggest thing is, at first is, you know, I, I think self-publishing is amazing and I'm always encouraging of people to self-publish. But the one thing that, you know, the one caveat is you're not going to hit the New York Times bestseller list if you self-publish. So the first thing that you've got to do is, published with a, a so-called traditional publisher. And then the key issue is the following. What, what the New York Times algorithm looks at is uh, channel diversity and geographic diversity. Okay. You have to sell a lot. If you, if you, if you sell 5,000 books, but you sell them across 50 states and across Amazon and Barnes and Noble and independent bookstores, you're probably going to be more, you're going to be more likely to hit the list than if you sell 10,000 books all from one person that bought them in, on Amazon. That makes sense. That makes sense. So it's really about getting out there with some bulk book deals. See if you can get some, some, some books, some 300, 400, 500 books sold in exchange for speaking like I did, um, as well as individual book sales and really thinking about uh, geographic diversity. Do you have an email list that reaches out to the 50 states? You know, where, where, where is your email list? Where is your social media following? And targeting really broadly there and making sure that you're doing... Uh, Amazon is obviously the most important channel, but independent bookstores and Barnes & Noble, the only major uh, physical uh, bookstore left, um, are, are, are also very, very important for the list. With respect to it, the changes, um, to be honest, it, it has changed things. The biggest change is my speaking. So I used to speak for free, and as a lot of marketers do, because marketers are expected to speak for free in exchange for getting leads to potentially um, you know, have, have as clients. Right. And before my New York Times bestseller, I, I spoke for free, and after my New York Times bestseller, I stopped speaking for free. And I, I've been able to command you know, uh, some really uh, nice speaking fees that I'm very, very, very fortunate uh, to, to get now. And, uh, you know, it's just a title, but I guess it's a title that, that you know, suggests some sort of success in people's minds. So of course, I'm not going to argue with it. Of course. And it is important, you know, not everybody reaches that stature. So it is definitely credible. Uh, so, you know, um, you have three kids you just mentioned, and uh, your little one is sick. So how do you find that balance between work and life. You know, I have two children and it's, it's difficult for me to find that balance sometimes. And uh, what does an ideal day look like you, look to you? Yeah, so I mean, I think that work-life balance is a bit of a myth because in today's world, we're sort of expected to work all the time. Um, so the really key issue is how can we shut up our phones, our electronic devices, and create actual quality time with the people that we care about with our with our families and uh, that's that's really important to me and to my wife and we've worked really hard at it it's definitely not easy really really hard but um, we try to do things like family dinners 
as close to every night as possible. Um, we usually hit five or six nights a week of family dinners, no matter what, you know, what else we're doing. Um, and, and go on some really great vacations and make sure that we shut off. Actually, I don't, I don't shut off during vacation, but I shut off while everyone's awake. <laughs> and I have, the, I have the luxury of not sleeping that much. So I can, I can go back and check my devices, you know, at midnight when people uh, go to sleep. But, you know, it, it's really about can you create um, that, that quality time. And that's the other amazing thing about being an entrepreneur that I'm very fortunate about is you know entrepreneurship is demanding in terms of hours but it's also very very uh free it's a it's very freeing in terms of flexibility and entrepreneurship allows us to you know go in and my my middle daughter had a mock trial last week and i was able to go see her a mock trial uh in, in middle school which was great and you know i i love to visit my kids you know classrooms for instance and so that's something that you know again i'm very fortunate because um, entrepreneurs are able to create more flexibility with their schedules than maybe, you know, typical corporate folks that work nine to five. So do you also follow this principle that not looking at your cell phone, you know, uh, 30 minutes or one hour after you wake up? Uh, I should. I have, I, I don't, but I should. I, I, you know, Hal Elrod is a friend of mine and uh, author of The Miracle Morning. He's a wonderful, wonderful uh, man and leader and writer. And if you haven't read The Miracle Morning, you, you should. It's a terrific uh, book. Dr. Robert Carter? No, his name is Hal Elrod. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, he, uh, so he's one of the people that talks about a morning routine. And there are lots of great folks that talk about a morning routine. I have not been able to do that successfully to a great extent. Mornings in my house were a little crazy with the kids and running around and... Um, but it is definitely something that some really, really successful and happy people have been able to do. And so I, I tip my cap to them. So just before we wind up, because I know we're running late, uh, you know, two questions I have. Firstly, among all this noise, you know, social media, being busy with your family, you know, devices screaming at us from all directions, how do you find that moment when you resonate with yourself what is there a practice like do you meditate do you pray how do you find that inner calling and listen to your voice yeah so great great question and i've been something i've been working on because it doesn't come naturally to me um and i've been working on it with one of my dear dear friends and uh, terrific entrepreneur uh named ben and he's helped me evolve to the point where I can practice, I wouldn't call it meditation, I'm really bad at meditation, which is kind of funny because I know it's not supposed to be, supposed to be something you're good or bad at, but practice more stillness. Um, I, I go for walks without my phone and use that time as an opportunity to uh, listen and smell and hear and look around me and sort of take in the world around me and nature around me and have an appreciation for it. That's, I think, as close as I can get, um, but it helps me stay centered and, uh, of course, get, get a little exercise built in, which, which makes me feel good about that as well. That's true, because I always say, you know, my, uh, the time I walk is essentially the time that I have with me because I'm not thinking about anything else, just being there, you know, and good point, I'll not carry my phone next time. <laughs> Well, that's the key for me because I can walk with my phone and then I'm still getting the exercise, but I'm not getting the, the, the stillness because I'm, I, you know, I, that's the thing about phones. They're, 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 they're the most amazing devices ever, ever built in terms of our ability to connect to the world. And yet they're um, ironically the worst things ever to help us connect to ourselves. True. That's true. So to wrap up, how can we be more likable? on and off the outline in 30 seconds well no i mean i in, i'll tell you i'll tell you I'll, I'll i'll leave you with this my second book which is my uh best reviewed book okay and my least uh, my worst selling book <laughs> because it has a very bad cover and in fact everyone does judge a book by its cover it's called likable business and i talk in that book about 11 principles of of, of, of likability and without getting too much into the details of all of them i think it's worth 
you know, looking at. Um, and it, it starts with listening and working on our listening skills. And, you know, it includes uh, things like transparency and authenticity and uh, passion and perseverance. And it ends, and I mentioned this earlier, but it ends with gratitude. And gratitude is uh, really the most amazing uh, drug on the planet. It, it, it puts us in a better state of mind and it's totally free and no side effects. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It allows us to be... Uh, you know, more likable people, but just happier people, more important. True. So on that note, I'm truly grateful to you for your time today. Even with all your busy schedule, it means a lot to me. And uh, thank you so much. And I hope uh, we hear and learn a lot more about being likable from you. Well, thank you very much for having me and have a super likable rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. I just stopped the live stream. Thank you so much for your time. It means a lot and I learned so much. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm happy to do it. I would stay in chat, but I have this 1.30, so I'm going to jump. But yeah. look forward to, to seeing you online. Sure. And I will um, post it and I'll also transcribe it and I'll share the links and everything with you. Okay, fantastic. Look forward to it. Thank you so much. You have a Bye -bye. wonderful day. Bye.